I want to talk to you about trailers. Good morning, my name is Matthew Leffler and I want to lease you trailers. But before I can do that, let's take a minute and talk about trailers. They're fascinating. I love them and people kind of want to know. Why do I love trailers? Look, there's about 5 million trailers that are out there in the United States. Some of them know where they are. Some of them don't. About 30% of trailers have some form of telemetry, a GPS, a telematics, all that visibility we seem to crave as a society. But inside those trailers, those 5 million trailers bouncing around, all of the things are there. Whether they're manufactured across the globe and brought across in a different type of box, eventually they find their way onto a trailer. And that trailer can go all across the country. So let's talk about some of the most common trailers out there. The trailer people think about the most, we think about for dedicated or contract or uh, truckload carrying. These are the 53 feet vans. Van being the kind of jargony term we use to describe them. A typical van will have a type of door. The door is usually a swing door. A swing door is like a barn door. There's hinges on both sides and they open up. Those are how you load everything in in one place and then you unload it all at the next place it goes to. That's the world of truckload. There's other types of trailers that are kind of interesting, like a pup. Now, it sounds cute, and in fact, they are, because they're 28 feet long. Typically, a 28-foot pup has a different type of door than a swing door. They got something called a roll-up door. They roll up kind of like your garage door. Why would you want to do a garage door style thing in a trailer? Well, maybe you're stopping a lot. Maybe you're picking up a lot. Maybe you don't know how many times those doors are going to open. And if you're a truck driver and you're opening and closing doors all day, it's probably safer to have a door like a garage door than a door like a swing door. It gives you more ability to get into difficult spaces. So that's the world of less than truckload, LTL. It's a very interesting application, but there's more trailers than that. So with LTL, anything can be in there. It's not just one person's stuff, it's all the people's stuff. It could be a floor sweeper from me and a pile of tires from somebody else. This is how LTL works. You never know exactly what's going to be inside that box. But the goal for the pup is to fill the box up with as many things as you can. Other types of trailing equipment are also pretty interesting, like chassis, intermodal, marine chassis. What's a chassis? Well, you have to remember, all of the things that are coming come across the ocean on giant boats. These are containers. Now we call them 20-foot equivalent units, or TEUs. These things are stacked like blocks. And then a giant crane machine picks up the box and places it on a chassis. And what is a chassis if nothing but a delicious BLT? Brakes, lights, and tires, and of course a subframe. That then takes the box to wherever it goes to next, which usually can be taking the box's contents out and distributing that across a wide spectrum of different places. So we talked about dry vans, pups, and chassis. That's a pretty good breakdown of some of the most common trailing assets that are out there. If you love things, and you love those things, they came by a truck. But not just a truck. We love the truck, we love the driver, but let's get a little bit of excitement for the trailer, that box that keeps everything safely contained and away from the elements. I'm not talking about flatbeds. I'm not talking about flatbeds yet. We'll talk about flatbeds in a later time. They, of course, get exposed to the weather. So now you have a little bit more information about trailers and why they're so amazing. And at the end of the day, I want you to love trailers too. Because without trailers, you can't do anything.